The Time Traveler's Guide to Not Getting Caught. Chapter 6. That Time I Impregnated a Cave Woman. By now, you know that I finally ended my sex drought. Seeing as how I impregnated a cave woman and all. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, that doesn't count because she's a cave woman. But I'll have you know. Just because her legs were covered in luscious brown hair doesn't make her any less of a woman than anyone in modern times. Anyway, I get back home after the failed orgy, and I gotta tell you, I'm a bit sexually frustrated at this point. I mean, first, Socrates gets me all worked up, and then my phone catastrophe prevents me from having ancient fun. So I take a seat on my couch, and I check my DVR, and I see that I have four deal or no deals. So I watch them all as I eat a rice aroni, and I think, is this really San Francisco's greatest treat? I figure I could use some sriracha, so I reach for my keychain, but then I realize it exploded in the 18th century, and I think, what a lazy bastard I've been, not getting more sriracha, and still not dry cleaning that kid's 1776 outfit. But then I remember, I've been busy traveling through space and time, so I decide to take it easy on myself. So I put my bed sheet back on my bed, and I go to sleep, and I wake up, and I realize it's a weekday, so I go to work. But I don't take the time to shave, so I get there all disheveled, and this woman at work named Susie, who likes to get in everyone's business, tells me I look like a caveman. And that's when it hits me. I should go back in time and have sex with a cave woman. <laughs> so I head home from work and I figure I should go back in time now because if I go to sleep, I'm just gonna wind up going to work the next day and perpetuate the stupid trend. So I put in 70,000 BC and enter the tubes for East Africa and it asks me to confirm. But then I think, wait, I can't confirm. I'm going back in time before civilization with lions and tigers and mastodons, oh my. Before I go, I would need to get some sort of weapon. So I give it some thought, and I figure it would be best if I bought a gun. So I heat up a DiGiorno, and I finish watching Deal or No Deal, and I'm glad I wasn't the contestant on this episode, because if I was, I would have wound up with $1 and regretted not taking the $55,000 offer. So then I inevitably go to sleep, and I wake up, and I decide I'm not going to go to work, and instead, I'm just going to call in sick and go buy me a gun. So I do a Yahoo search for a local gun shop, and I find one. So I go there and I ask the guy what gun would be best to take down a really big elephant. And he shows me a shotgun and I say, well, all right, I'll take it. But he says there's a three-day waiting period and I'm like, but I need it now. And he says, well, there's a gun show the town over. And I ask what a gun show is. And he tells me it's like Comic-Con, but for guns. And I say, well, that sounds pretty cool. Sign me up. And he says, I don't need to sign up. I just need to show up and buy a gun. And I say, that's great because I really need a gun. So I go to the gun show and I'm looking around and I find this guy selling shotguns. And I tell him I'm looking for a gun that could take down a big elephant. And this guy shows me this really big shotgun and I say, awesome, can I have it? And he says, if you've got the money. And I say, oh, I've got the money. So I pay the man and I get my shotgun and I buy some shells and I head home. So I'm about to head back in time when I wonder what I should wear. Should I put on some sort of animal fur? But then I decide, who cares if some cave people see me wearing strange clothes? What are they going to do, drop pictures of me in a cave and alter the history of our planet? So I put on some Timbalands, but then I take them off because I look ridiculous in them and instead put on some sneakers. And then I grab a backpack to put my shotgun and ammo in and other essentials. And I travel back in time 70,000 years ago. I suddenly find myself in the middle of a National Geographic documentary. With shrubs and dirt and trees and not a homo sapien in sight. My first thought was... How do I find a sexy cave woman? And my second thought was, I wonder what Socrates is up to. So there I was, trekking through Africa with a shotgun in hand, when I hear a noise nearby. So I instinctively fire the shotgun at the noise because I'm not taking any chances here. But it turned out just to be some sort of prehistoric rat, not something scary like a prehistoric spider. So I continue walking along, wishing I had a Fitbit because I was racking up those steps and I could have shown Susie at work since all she does is go on and on about how she walks 10,000 steps a day. And I'd love to see her face when she saw that I was more active than her, which meant I was a much better human being than she was. It was getting late and it seemed like I'd have to set up camp for the night, but I had a time machine so I just skipped the night and made a day again. I ate some beef jerky I'd stowed away in my backpack and continued through the stupid prehistoric environment when finally, off in the distance, I see a human being. So I walk up to a caveman who's holding a spear in hand, just pointing it at me. And I keep pushing it away. I'm trying to explain to him that I'm a future human being in search for a cavewoman to make love to, but he doesn't understand me at all. Or maybe he did understand me, but was just a total dick. Then he nudges me with the spear to walk. 
So I do, and we walk for a while, and every once in a while he nudges me with the spear. And every time he does, I'm thinking, you can't shoot this guy right now, even though he's pissing you off, because if you do, you might wipe out millions of his descendants. So I hold back from shooting him, and then finally, we reach his tribe. His tribe had about 30 people, and when I get there, everyone's looking at me strangely because I'm wearing sneakers and have a 12-gauge shotgun in my hand. So they all gather around, and they're looking at me and expect me to say something in their language. But of course, I don't speak caveman, but I tell them all that I'm a future human and I've come to make love with a cavewoman, but they all just stare at me blankly. And that's when I spot a bird on a nearby branch. And I aim my shotgun and I fire and the bird explodes and feathers rain down from above. And everyone looks at me with adoring eyes the same way I had looked at Socrates. So at this point in time, most of them are really impressed with me. But there are still some skeptical people that want more proof because they're starting to consider me a god. So the men decide to take me out on a hunt. So I walk with the men for a couple miles and this guy is still nudging me with his spear. And I'm thinking, you just saw me explode a bird and you're still jabbing me? Anyway, after a while, we finally spot a mastodon herd and the leader of the group starts speaking in his caveman language about some sort of strategy to take out the mastodons. And I'm thinking, I've got this gun. Let's see if I can actually take down one of these things. And so I walk up to one of the mastodons and this beast of a thing isn't afraid of me at all. And I raise my shotgun to its head and I fire. And I mean, he was just no match against 21st century human technology. So the creature falls to the ground and all the cavemen stare at me in shock as I stand over the old timey elephant with my shotgun. Remember, guns don't kill mastodons, people kill mastodons. So now all the cavemen are in total shock. And the dude who was poking me with the spear finally backs away. But I'm still annoyed by all the jabbing he did. So I aim the shotgun at him and he begs for mercy. And I think, oh, so this is why people love guns. And then the cavemen take out knives and start cutting up the mastodon. And we carry back the prehistoric creature's remains to the tribe where the men regale the rest of the tribe with my heroics. Or at least that's what I assume they're doing. I look around and I spot all the cave women looking at me with these big adoring smiles, which is interesting because even 70,000 years ago, a smile means the same thing as it does today. I didn't know the rules of the tribe, but I just assumed this now meant that I was the alpha because all the women were looking at me like they wanted me, and all the men were looking at me like they wanted to be me. So I glance around at the women, trying to decide which one I loved most. When a guy makes a big fire and we start cooking parts of the mastodon, and I think, cool, I'm going to eat a mastodon. I can cross that off the bucket list. So after the meat was cooked, I take a big bite, and I'm chewing the prehistoric meat, and I'm thinking, it's actually not that bad though it could use some sriracha. So we finish eating our Mastodon dinner and then the tribe begins a ritual that I think is specifically for me, but I have no idea really because I don't speak caveman. But everyone keeps looking at me. And then the elder of the tribe keeps holding my arm up in the air like I just won a boxing match. So I figure it most likely had something to do with me. So the celebration ends and the elder tribesman presents me with this big necklace made of what I assume to be saber-toothed tiger teeth because the only prehistoric animals I know are Mastodons and saber-toothed tigers. So I put on the necklace and everyone looks at me and I feel compelled to talk. So I recite the lyrics to Welcome to New York by Taylor Swift and everyone seems to be really into it. So I'm glad I did that and not love her because I just don't think that song would resonate as much with the cave people crowd. So I finish the song and the elder shows me to the cave and I think, finally, I'm going to have some sex with a cave woman in a cave. But when I get there, it's just me. So I think, okay, maybe they'll choose a mate for me and send her in. But then I wind up waiting several hours in the cave and nobody comes in and I'm thinking, well, this is bullshit. I kill a mastodon and feed this tribe for weeks and all I get is a lousy necklace and a cave to sleep in. So I pull out a sleeping bag from my backpack and I put on my portable heater and I'm feeling toasty with my setup and then I fall asleep. So I wake the next day and I exit my cave to find all the cave people hanging out, just having fun, not doing any work. And I'm thinking, damn, this is what life used to be like for human beings. This seems awesome. It's like sleepaway camp where all you have to do is blow off a mastodon's head every few weeks and then you get a party all day and not have to worry about work or having to return a child's 1776 costume. So I join the group and everyone's looking at me like I'm some sort of rock star. And I think, well, this is cool. Everyone loves me because of my gun. But I wanted to see more amazement on their faces. So I go into my backpack and I rifle through it, looking for something else cool that I could show them all. The first thing I find is a fidget spinner which I brought because I didn't know how boring it would be in prehistoric times. So I spin it on my finger and everyone looks at me with awe. And then I give the fidget spinner to a little cave boy and he spins it on his finger and everyone oohs and awes. But then they want something else that's new and cool. 
So I go into my backpack and I pull out a laser pointer, which I really didn't mean to pack. It's just been in there for years and I always forget to take it out. So I take the laser pointer out and I shine it on the ground and the little kids dive at the laser like they're cats or something. And then I shine the laser in circles and watch as they all run around. But then I accidentally shine it into one of the kid's eyes and he screams <laughs> and he covers his eye like he's blind. And I'm thinking, holy shit, I just blinded a cave boy. And now I'm thinking, well, damn, this kid is probably going to be known as one eye or something for the rest of his life. And I start to feel really bad. But then I thought, well, he'll probably be honored for having been injured by the awesome stranger's magical red dot. So I stopped feeling bad. And then I start to feel a little envious that this semi-blind kid would wind up a legend in his tribe for not even doing anything. I mean, all he did was get blinded by me. Anyway, the cave people look at me again, waiting for me to show something else. So I go into my backpack and I pull out a Mountain Dew, but I'm thinking I should do something cool with it. So I shake it up and I open it and I spray it everywhere and everyone's all afraid. But then I take a sip and I let a nearby hot cave woman take a sip and she seems to like it. And that's when I notice her beautiful hairy legs. And I wonder if this is going to be my future cave woman wife. So I did what any guy from the present visiting the prehistoric past would do when he found a cave woman he was interested in procreating with. I put my arm around her to show everyone I liked her and I looked around to see if anyone was offended, but nobody was. So I thought, all right, this is working out pretty good. So I show her to my cave and as we go in there, I tell her I'm sorry I haven't decorated because I just moved in yesterday. And she says something in her cave woman language and then she sits down on my sleeping bag. It was at this time that I had an urge to take out my phone to take a picture of her but I had learned my lesson and I didn't want to miss out on this opportunity. So I start kissing her neck and then I quickly stop to spit out tiny hairs of hers that got in my mouth. And then I continued down to the chest area and she seemed to like it. So I'm thinking, nice, this is the most action I've had in a while. And I'm like, okay, let's do this. So I take off my clothes and I take hers off and I look at her naked cave woman body and it looks very similar to modern day women, except for all the hair. Now look, I'm not one to kiss and tell, all I'll say is that the sex was glorious. And I'm sure it was the best sex she ever had in her life as well, because I was doing all of these sex moves I know she had never seen before in her life. And then when it was over, I laid back on the sleeping bag and relished in the fact that I had gone over my drought. And for the first time since I found the time traveling device, I had a sense of clarity. I had inadvertently gained an enormous amount of power by finding this watch, but I wasn't using it for any good. Like, I could go back in time and kill Hitler. Or like, you know, I could, I could kill Hitler. I guess I don't really know anything else that I could do to help people other than kill Hitler. I could kill Stalin. Was Stalin really bad? What about Genghis Khan? I could kill Genghis Khan. Who names a kid Genghis anyway? Or does it mean prince? I think it means prince. Man, I could go for some Mongolian food right now. Whatever happened to the Mongolian Empire? I wonder if Mongolian girls are hot. Oh, I bet they are. Wait, where was I? Anyway, the next morning I hang out with the cave people and I realize I'm having the most fun of my life. I mean, not only was I their king, but I had absolutely zero responsibilities and I was in the best relationship of my life. So I stayed in prehistoric time for weeks and weeks because what else did I have to do? And after all that time, I really didn't miss TV that much because I was with nature and my people. And then I found out one day my cave woman had missed her period and that I was going to be a dad. <coughs> So I told the tribe I had to get a pack of cigarettes from my cave and so I go in and I collect my sleeping bag and all my belongings and I travel back to the present because there was no way I was going to raise a child that was half cave person and half me. I mean, I can barely take care of myself. But you know, honestly, I really didn't feel that bad because I knew the child would be looked after by the tribe. It was kind of like the tribe would raise all the kids anyway. There is one thing I wonder though. I wonder how many people today exist that are direct descendants of me. Am I the reason human beings are smart? I mean, I'm no genius, but I did get a three on my AP chemistry test, so I'm no dummy either. Anyway, the lesson I learned traveling back to 70,000 BC Africa is this. If you're going to go back in time and have sex with a cavewoman, remember to wear a condom. Thanks for listening, and please subscribe and rate the podcast to help me get more of the positive attention I so sorely need. Follow the show on Instagram at Time Traveler's Guide Podcast and me at Anonymous Time Traveler 69. New episodes out Thursday nights at 8.